Get ready for your miracle tonight. I say get ready for your miracle tonight. In the presence of God anything can happen. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Son of God. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Stretch those hands up one more time. Father, tonight we lift up our hands. We surrender to you, King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the great I am of the Bible. You promise that where two or three will gather in your name, you will be there in their midst. We believe, Lord, that you are here. We believe that you are here to heal us, to save us, to change our destinies. You are here, Lord, for us. And I thank you. I thank you for honoring us with your presence. And now I pray that you will meet everyone. You will meet everyone at the point of their need. The word of God will change our lives completely. It will bring faith. It will build our faith capacity so that we will be able to receive that which you have ordained for us today we come against the devil we come against the forces of darkness we come against all principalities and powers and rulers we come against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places we silence every voice of the enemy we tell you Satan you cannot operate we silence every voice of sickness and disease we declare that you cannot operate in this house you have no place in this place you have no place you cannot rule 
we are ruling together with Christ. We are ruling together with Christ. And we take charge and dominion in this place tonight. Arise, O God, and let all your enemies, let all of them be scattered. We bless you. We worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people shout a big amen. amen. Ah, shout a big amen. Today, in the whole country, the talk is Masuja. And Masuja or heroes are people that did something, that did something for the society. Every time we do something for others, you begin to build your heroism. Every time we do things for ourselves, it will end with us. Or when we build, when we do something for others, we sacrifice for others, then we build a history. And your being here tonight makes you a hero. I say it makes you a hero. I say it makes you a hero. We are standing in the gap for this nation. Somebody say amen. amen. We refuse to allow the devil to, to, do the plan, to do the things that he plans to do against us. We will stand in faith and stop every plan of the devil. There will be nothing that will take us back to where we came from. I say nothing will take us back from where we came from. And that's why we have to gather and we have to pray. We have to bind demons because there are forces of darkness. There are forces of darkness that want to make the world a dark place but we are the light of the world i say we are the light of the world i say we are the light of the world we will not allow darkness to rule our country i say we will not allow it so we we take our place of dominion i want us to take two minutes and I want, you, I want you to bind every demon, every demon that is saying sickness, sickness in Kenya. There will be no sickness in this country. Corona is dead. I say Corona is dead. It will not domain, take dominion in this country. We, we arrest it. I want you to cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Let's do some damage to the kingdom of darkness. Let's do some damage. Shaladaboshima. Yes, in the name of Jesus. We say no. We say no to whatever they are talking about. You say whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. No weapon, no weapon. Corona is a weapon. No weapon formed against us, which will prosper. So we say in the name of Jesus, Corona will never prosper. Corona will never prosper. We declare and decree by the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus. And we are taking charge. We are taking dominion. We are ruling together with Christ in the name of Jesus. Arise, O oh God, and let all your enemies, let all your enemies, let all your enemies be scattered. We thank you. We thank you. Because your, your enemies have been scattered. They have been scattered. 
in different directions. Clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. Whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven and whatever we lose on earth is loosed in heaven. We have just disarmed the enemy. Somebody shout hallelujah. I say somebody shout hallelujah. Well, we, we're just going to go right into the word of God. I want to, I want to welcome my son, uh, uh, Pastor Light Jr. to come. And I bring the word tonight. I say, let's let's welcome the servant of God properly. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Give Jesus a mighty hand and a shout. Hallelujah. It is wonderful to be here this evening. God is about to do something mighty in this place. I can feel the Spirit of God. He is here. The Lord is here. There is such an anointing in this place right now. And whatever it is that you want to receive from heaven, whatever it is that your heart desires, this is the time to receive it. This is the time to receive it. This is the time to receive it. Shout amen if you believe it. This is the time to receive it. This is not a normal service. I said this is not a normal service. We are about to get a visitation from heaven. And lives are going to change things are going to change. Your life will never be the same again. And the Lord is going to speak to us. Before you sit down, turn to your neighbor and tell them expect a miracle today. Thank you so much, choir. And worship him. Find yourself a good place to sit. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. I have to contain myself because I feel such a heavy anointing in this place. There is such an awesome, awesome anointing. Well, let me go to the word of God before I get disorganized. Exodus chapter 3 Exodus chapter 3 we're going to read a few verses there and then we're going to jump and go to Deuteronomy Today is focus day. Hallelujah. So we're going we're gonna to read some, some scriptures. Hallelujah. I'm going to start from verse 4. It says, So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he answered, Here I am. Then he said, Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon him. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because their taskmasters for uh, let me read that again and I and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters for I know their sorrows 
So I have come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hevites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me. And I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, I will certainly be, th be with you, I will certainly be with you, and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say? to them and God said to Moses I am who I am and he said thus you shall say to the children of Israel I am has sent me to you Deuteronomy Chapter 1, verse 26. Nevertheless, you should not go up, but rebelled. Let me read that again. Nevertheless, you would not go up, but rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. And you complained in your tents and said because the Lord hates us he has brought us out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amor Amorites to destroy us where can we go our brethren have been discouraged our hearts our brethren have discouraged our hearts saying the people are greater and taller than we the cities are great and fortified up to heaven moreover we have seen the sons of the An of the Anakim there. Then I said to, to you, do not be terrified or afraid of them. The Lord your God who goes before you, he will fight for you according to all he did for you in Egypt before your eyes and in the wilderness where you saw how the Lord your God carried you as a man carries his son in all the way that you went until you came to this place yet for all that you did not be yet for all that you did not believe the lord your god who went in the way before you to search out a place for you to pitch your tents to show you the way you should go in the fire by night and in the cloud by day we read one more place Psalms chapter 95. Verse 6 he says, Oh come let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. For he for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, as in the day of trial in the wilderness. When your fathers tested me, they tried me, though they saw my work for 40 years, I was grieved with that generation and said, 
It is a people who go astray in their hearts and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you and we bless you, Holy Spirit of God. We welcome you into this place. Speak through me, O Lord. Change lives. Touch your people's hearts, my Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Shout a better amen. I have entitled my message, I am the now God. I am is a title that God uses. It is his name. God that we serve is a God of the present. Praise the Lord. He says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But he is a now God. He is God that delivers in the present. Praise the Lord. Moses is tending flock for his father-in-law. And he sees a fire. And when he sees that fire, that fire is burning a bush. But the bush is not being consumed. And it amazes him. And when he goes to draw closer to that place, God stops him and tells him, Moses, Moses, take off your sandals because where you step is holy ground. The God that we serve is a holy God. The God that we serve is a mighty God. Where he stands, he, may, he purifies wherever he stands. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said he purifies and he sanctifies wherever he dwells. So where God is, that is a holy place. The presence of God is so awesome. And so powerful that we need to be able to reverence it every time we are in his presence. We should not take it for granted because the presence of God has got answers to questions that we have had for a long time. God confronts Moses and he tells Moses, remove your sandals because where you stand is holy ground. And he tells him, I have heard the cry of my people. Before the beginning of this year, we had a prophecy here that we are entering into a new season and the new season is going to be nine months. During word explosion, I preached that there are things that hold you back to a season. Nine months is over. Things are opening up. Immediately after the ninth month, they opened up almost everything. Did you see it? They opened up almost everything. Now they're opening up even the schools. But there are things that are holding us to that season. God speaks to Moses. And he tells Moses, I have heard the cry of my people. And I have seen the torment that they are going through by the Egyptians, their taskmasters. God is seeing everything that we go through. God has an answer for everything that we have been going through. I told you today, it's not a normal service. Why? Because you are here. And most people are on holiday. So there is something that you are searching for. And that's why you are here. Otherwise you would be also on holiday. The children of Israel were crying to God. Day and night. Because of what they were going through. We are not in an ordinary season. We must claim the victory that is ours. We must not live in the yesterday. We must live in the now that God is talking about. God said nine months and that season will end. But we are still living in that season. 
we are still tormented by the taskmasters of that season. They tell us how to dress, what to put on, when to go home, when to get out of the house. They tell us everything. It is time for us to take our place as the church and tell God enough is enough. They are prophesying doom. They are saying that was not bad. We are about to get into a worse place. I have come to tell you we are not going back. We are going forward. We are not going to be held back by the devil and his forces. The God that we serve, he says, I am who I am. He says, I am who I am. And he is a God of right now. He is not a God that talks about the future. When he tells you he will give you something, it, it is up to you to receive it when you want to receive it. Ah, you didn't hear me. When God says he's giving you something, it is up to you to receive it when you are ready to receive it. God speaks to Moses and he tells him, I am the God of your father. He tells him, I am God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. And I have heard the cry of my people. He identifies himself as his God. We have a father who lives in heaven that everything he says, heaven is his throne room and the earth is his footstool. That is the God that we serve and he has told us that we are going to be ten times better this year. Why does it look like we are ten times worse? Did he say? Is he not faithful to do what he say? Is he a man that he should lie? Then what is the problem? The children of Israel, God speaks to Moses and he tells Moses, I am going to take them to a good land. You didn't hear me. He says, I am going to take them into a large and good land. A land flowing with milk and honey. When God moves you out of a situation, he doesn't take you to a worse situation. Come on now. I said when God moves you out of a situation, the only place to go is up. And he has a promise for us. Like he gave them a word to Moses and told Moses, I am removing my, the children of Israel, my people from that land. And I am going to take them to a land that is large, that is big. How many of you want to enlarge your territory? God has given you everything that you need. Now. He has given you your job back. Now. When the Lord gave me this message, when I entered here, I felt the Spirit say, there is a lot of pain in this house. There are people that are here that are hurting because of the situation that is going on right now. And you are seated here and you don't know what you're going to do next. I have come to tell you the Lord has sent me to tell you that he is moving you from that situation. That he is getting you out from that situation. That the Egyptians that are tormenting you will torment you no longer. The children of Israel were given a promise. 
and they heard the promise and they saw the works of God. And Moses, God told Moses, I will put you before Pharaoh as a God. And Moses did signs, miracles, and wonders until the magicians of Egypt told Pharaoh, this now is the finger of God. We don't serve a God that is made out of wood, gold, or silver. We don't serve a God that is made by these hands. We serve a God that created everything that you see and what you do not see. He created the heavens, which is what we see up there and which is what is the spiritual realm that is not visible with these eyes. And he says... He is our God. But we need to take dominion. We need to take seriously what God is saying. Because what God is saying is that you do not have to live the way you are living right now. The children of Israel saw miracles, signs and wonders. We see them in this church every day. But they did not believe. Moses led them out of Egypt into the wilderness. This is the wilderness period. Oh, you didn't hear me. The season for Israel to be in Egypt ended and they entered into the wilderness. The season for Corona ended but the torments that Corona came with is still here. And the children of Israel held on to Egypt. You better hear me. You better hear me. The children of Israel held on to Egypt and they held on to the slavery that God had already removed them out of and they only saw defeat. Even when God had shown them victory. There is a place that we are in right now. That only thing that we, everything that we see is, is dictated but by what we see on the TV and on the media. That that has filled us with so much fear and so much discontentment and the unbelief has now crept into our hearts that even when we speak we speak doubt and fear the children of Israel God told them I am taking you to, uh, to the land of the Amorites he didn't tell them I'm taking you to an empty land the land had occupants. What we fight is not flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. And those principalities and powers don't go on holiday. They don't know much to day. And we must know that what the territory that God has given to us is occupied. Oh, come on now. Your job where you are supposed to be. There is somebody that is sitting on that seat right now. We expect things to come easy. God is not an easy God. God is not an easy God. He gives you the best. And the best is usually taken. Ah, you didn't hear me. If he gives you a CEO seat, there is a CEO currently sitting on that seat. If he gives you a managerial position where you are working, where they have told you we will call you when situations get better. Because you are not even there. They have told you we will call you when things stabilize. And God is saying, I have given you a position there. And you are waiting for the call. But not real. Why? Because according to what it looks like, the situation has not changed. When the children of Israel moved out of Egypt and went into the wilderness, the wilderness was more harsh. Ah, come on now. The wilderness 
was more harsh than Egypt. They told Moses, did you move us from Egypt? Where the, at least there are graves. To bring us here in the wilderness where we will die and nobody will ever know. The wilderness is harsher than where we came from. God removed us from the world. He took us out of Egypt is a sign of the world. And he gave us a promise. Papa says God does not give things. He gives promises. He doesn't give things. Things we get ourselves. Things we stretch out our hand and say what God has given us. What God has given me. I take dominion and control over it right now. We must learn that the God that we serve is a now God. He is not the God of later. Later is you. And the period of later is determined by you. You can be jobless for the next three years. Or that joblessness can end. Ah, you didn't hear me. You can suffer the torments of Corona until when you get tired of it. When you get tired of it, God says, you already know the way. Because when God sent took the children of Israel out of Egypt. He took them to the wilderness and he sent 12, one for each tribe to go and check out the land. So the way they knew where, where the land was. You know where your next level is. You know. You know. But the devil is speaking. And he is saying there are giants there. And the cities are fortified. Wherever you want to go, it is not attainable. God is not mocked. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, so shall he reap. If you sow and believe, you will reap the calamity of unbelief. When the children of Israel went and saw the land and they came and gave a bad report, they planted a seed into the hearts of the children of Israel. And the children of Israel who did not reject that word they did not reject that word. They did not cancel and nullify it. Some things that we are hearing right now, we should take control and nullify them against our lives. Yeah. We should say we will not suffer what they are suffering. What they are going through is not our portion. We should walk in faith. Because God has spoken. God has said that we will be ten times better this year that looks that, that will take people so back. Things are so horrible out there. They should not be horrible in here. We should operate like we know who we serve. David writes and he says, put it, put it up for me. Psalms 95. He asks the children of Israel to bow down and bless his holy name. And he tells them about a period of time that was not then. Why would he remind the children of Israel about a time that had passed? Because there is a tendency of living in the past 
when you are supposed to live in the present. There is a tendency to keep on doing what you did last season in a new season. We must live like this is a new season. We must live like we know that God has spoken. Can I use your tablet, ma'am? It says in verse 6, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture. And the sheep of his hand. He is saying, I am the Lord that takes care of you. He is saying that he gives you. You see, sheep are led to the pasture. If you leave sheep here, you come back, you'll find them here. They are not like goats. They have to be led. That is why it is very necessary for you to come to church. Because when you come to church, you get leadership. You get direction. You get to know where you are supposed to be going. Sheep tend to stay in the same place. But the Lord is our shepherd. He watches over us and he gives us pasture. He says, today, if you will hear his voice. Come on now. He says, today, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. What is he talking about? He is talking about the rebellion that happened in the wilderness. When Moses spoke to the children of Israel and told them that God had told them to go to a land that he was going to show them. And when they saw that land, they came back to, to the people and told them that land... Truly it is good like they say. The fruits are good. It flows with milk and honey. And here are the fruits. But. But. The rebellion started with the but. They saw what God had said. We saw what God had said. Nine months and the season will end. And the season ended. Because we would not be here if the season did not end. We were locked out. Come on now. This place was closed. For months. Papa was closed out there for five months. Everything was shut down. No movement. We are moving now. You can get on a plane. You can go wherever you want to go. You can go outside the country. The season ended. Whatever the devil is telling you, he is telling you something to hold you captive to an old season. Your time for joblessness ended. Your time of you suffering ended. Your time of you wondering where you will get food from ended. Amen. But the devil is preaching louder than I am. Louder. He is saying, I will not let you enter the promise. And you see, God allows me, I will talk about the rest next time. When you do not hearken to the voice of God, God gets offended. Not for his sake, because him is where he was. He doesn't miss anything. He is offended because you are supposed to be where you are supposed to be. Not where you are. And you make him look like a liar. You're not hearing me. He is offended because he says, my word will not return to me void. 
it must accomplish. He looked at the children of Israel and said, for every day that you went to spy that land, because you have brought this report, you will serve a year in this wilderness. And all of you who believe that report will not see that land. Put for me Hebrews, I show you something. Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 1. I don't know if there's somebody back there. Mama. Okay, I'm going to use Mama's Bible. Hallelujah. It is there. All right. Start from verse 1. It says, Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear. Mm. There was a promise of us to be ten times better. How many were here? Are you ten times better? Are you two times better? Three, maybe four, heading there? Are we getting there? Or are we moving backwards? The Bible says, since a promise remains of entering his last, let us fear lest any of you seem, <laughs> seem to have come short of it. If you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. There was a man who heard what Elisha said and, tell, and told him, even if the heavens were to be opened, that can never happen. Man of God told him, you will see it, but you will not partake of it. Paul is saying, you should fear. Fear. Why? Because that promise is yours, but it is easily snatched by the devil that you might seem, you see, that word seem means that Whatever God has given you, you already have. But you might seem. Whatever is released, is released in the spiritual realm. We must receive it into the physical realm. So if you don't receive it, you can seem. You can seem like you have gone short of it. Why? Do we hear and become only hearers and not doers? Put for me verse 2. Quickly. For indeed the gospel was preached to us who are hearing it right now as well as to them. But the word which they had did not profit them not being mixed with faith. In those who had it. The things of God. Hebrews chapter 6. Chapter 11 verse 6. It says without faith. Without faith. It is impossible. To please God. Faith. Says the negative of everything else. That other things are saying. Faith goes left. When everybody is going right. That's what, when you, when you do things the opposite of other, what other people are doing, that's when you know you are moving in faith. Because faith is not understandable. When, you, when people walk by faith, they do things in a very weird way. When God spoke to Isaac, he told him, do not go to Egypt like your father. Stay here. Stay here. And the Bible says, and he sowed in that land 
during the time of famine, God is not controlled by the seasons. He controls the seasons. You didn't hear me. You did not hear me. God is not controlled by seasons. He controls seasons. And when he says this period is over, it is over. It is over. Because he's the one who controls it. He's the one who says, who sets time. He is not governed by time. He governs time. But we can live. And the Bible is showing us that you will not be the first one to live like that. You can live. That was the Old Testament. Hebrews is the New Testament. And Paul is dealing with the same thing. And Pastor Light Jr. is dealing with the same thing. Why? Because what we see and what we hear. You see, the people that came to tell the children of Israel came and gave them a story. The same way when you listen to the news on television, they give you a story. They call them stories. Yeah. Ah, come on now. That's what they call them. They're stories. So they give you a story of their version of that story. And we listen and we say, this is true. What they're telling us is true. 600 and plus plus people have died. We, where did you see them? Have they come and shown us bodies of corona people any one time? Even those reporters that report. I'm not saying it's not true. I'm saying that the, the, the Amorites and the Praesites and the Jebusites were there. Yeah, they were there. They were there. God tells Joshua, only be strong and very courageous. It's not whether Corona is true or not true. It has nothing to do with anything. It had nothing to do with whether they were inhabitants and whether the cities were fortified. You need to hear me. You need to hear me. Because God that identifies himself, he says, I am who I am. You don't need a name. I am who I am. And when you go there, go and tell them, I am, I sent you. I am whatever you want. Because I am the God of your father. But we have had names so much until we get scared. How the economies are going down and buildings are coming up. Who, who, who is lying to who? Who is lying to who? There are people becoming very rich during this time. Who is lying to who? We must choose today who will believe. When you read your Bible, the Bible talks about today, it talks about now. It does not talk about later. God deals with your situation now. When you get saved, you get saved now. And you remain saved now. And you enter heaven now. You can live like you are in heaven here on earth. That's why Jesus said, I have come so that you may have life and have it in abundance. You, it does not matter the economy. When they asked him, you say you are a king. He said, my kingdom is not of this. Huh? My kingdom controls this one. Ah, you are not hearing me. He could not have agreed to a lesser kingdom. He said, my kingdom is not of this earth. And if it was, those people would have rioted. But my kingdom supersedes this one. And you do what you have to do. Jesus laid his life down. He laid his life down. He was not killed by anybody. 
And all of that was that 2,000 years later, you can sit here during a time like this and receive a word from heaven that will benefit your life from today and forever. The children of Israel went through a rough time in the wilderness. Why? Because of unbelief. Because they did not hear what God said. They heard what men said. And that is the biggest problem that we have. is because we hear what men say more than what God said. Because when God sends, he sends a man. Like he has sent me today. And there are lives that are going to be changed. And unfortunately, can, I, can, I, can you put for me Hebrews 4, 6. Bible says, since therefore it remains that some mm, 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 mm. The Bible didn't say, since therefore it remains that all it says, some must you see, when the children of Israel lived in the wilderness, most of them didn't enter. A new generation came, but there was a remnant of the old generation. The Joshua's and the Caleb's. Since, therefore, it remains that some must. Because every time a man of God speaks, there are few people that catch what he's saying and move with it. Since, therefore, it remains that some must enter. And those to whom it was first preached did not enter. Did not enter because of disobedience. Verse 7. Quickly. Again, he designates a certain day, saying in David, Today, after such a long time as it has been said, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. This scripture we use when we're asking people to get saved. Yes, we use it a lot. But this scripture is talking about them that are already in the kingdom that live against what God had said. Because it says that those who did not enter, did not enter because of disobedience. They were part of the children of Israel. They were part of them that were supposed to enter, but did not enter because they had disobedience in their hearts. We hear and we say, what we have heard, that one was for another brother. Pastor does not know the situation I'm in. I don't have to know. God said, I have heard the cry of my people. I have seen what their, what their taskmasters are putting them through. He, he knows he has heard how we cry every morning. He has seen with his eyes what governments and people, evil people, evil men, evil men that sit in high places, that control things, that eat better than anybody else. When they tell you stay at home, they go to their offices ah. with cars following them. They go to where they're supposed to be. You think I'm lying to you? You see them on TV, they don't, they don't present from their houses. Have you seen them presenting from their houses? They come to where they work. It is the Ministry of Health. That's where they present from, their offices. When they tell you stay at home, they go to their office. Who is lying to who?
and people have lost jobs people have lost their livelihood and the devil is somewhere dancing because the church is part of that mess when they ask the church and and I don't know who you are who call yourself interfaith I don't know what that thing is and I am sorry because whatever interfaith is is not faith it has nothing to do with faith because if they were faith based they would tell you faith goes the other way it doesn't go the same way you are going so whatever that interfaith is, I don't know what it is. And Christians should not be part of it. Because God says, I am who I am. Your taskmasters, the Egyptians, they were the first civilization. They had armors and everything. They were not weaklings. That is why God said to Moses, I will make you a God before Pharaoh. I will make, if we need to have men of God who can stand in front of kings and behave like gods. Because where we are going, where we are, we are stuck. We are stuck, but we cannot continue being stuck. It is time for us to know, as I wind up, that the God that we serve is a now God. Is a now God. Is a now God. And that promise, there's a promise. There's a promise of us to be ten times better. There is a promise for us to be ten times better. There is a promise. We must... You cannot be ten times better doing the same things you are doing. In Deuteronomy, it says the, the, the children of Israel cried and they said, God hates us. He moved us from Egypt to come and live, give us to the hands of the Amorites. He told them about the Amorites. He told Abraham about the Amorites. Read your Bible. Genesis 15, verse 13. He tells them that your descendants, your descendants will be will be taken captive into a land that is not their own. But after 400 years, it says. Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs and will serve them and they will afflict them 400 years. God know, knew about Corona before Corona came. He announced a season. Amos says God will not do anything. Unless first he reveals it to his prophets, he will do nothing. He told Abraham, he told Abraham that you will not be alive. Don't worry. But your descendants, they will go through some problems. They will go through some problems. But the problems that they will go through after 400 years, put up that verse for me. 15. Now, as you shall, uh, verse 14, let's go 14 first. It says, and also the nation whom they serve, I will judge. Afterward, they shall come out ten times better. Ten times better. Ten times better. God does not move you, does not take you through something, and you come out the same way you went in. He spoke in the beginning of the year and he said, you, we shall be, you shall be ten times better. 
when we didn't know Corona. And we entered into something that had turbulence. A lot of turbulence. We did not know what was happening. And now, God spoke and he said, 400 years. Look at this. He said, 400 years. The children of Israel were in captivity and in the desert for over 430 years. Where is the 30 years coming from? We can continue being in this situation of corona for another two, three, four years. You can... Somebody is calling. The Lord, when he gives you something, he expects you to take control over what he has given you so that what he says is manifest in your life. But God will not wait for you to walk in unbelief or disobedience. He will give it to whom who is ready for that. He will not wait for you because God is not a man that he should lie. He is not a son of man that he should repent. Why would he say something and not do it? We must get into that position. We must get into our position that we are sons of God. That we are sons with a promise. You see, that is what is so... It, 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 you need to be afraid, Paul says. Because you have a promise. We, you sit under anointing that comes from the throne room of heaven that speaks and says and declares things. But then when he declares those things and you are hearer of it, he says they had the same gospel. Well, all of us had the same thing. All of us had the same thing. But not being mixed. They did not mix what they had with faith. You, you did not take the ten times literally. You took it probably it will be spiritual. You see, there are people that if, if Jesus would have said, after three days, I shall be raised up spiritually. You don't hear me. Even if he did not raise, he could have said, he, he did not say physically. He said spiritually. And that's where Christians, we give God an excuse. We say, no, you know, I am ten times better spiritually. I am more anointed. I speak better in tongues. I have prayed and I, 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 I feel things will happen. Really? 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 We hide under the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm is only activated when the physical responds to the spiritual. Ah, oh, you didn't hear me. The physical realm has to respond. When Jesus died, there was an earthquake. Darkness came on the earth. The physical has to respond to the spiritual. You cannot tell us that you are spiritually better and physically you are not. It does not work like that. It is, it is fake. I decided that I'll be ten times better. No, I, I didn't tell you so that you say amen. No. The monies I've handled this year, I have not handled in my life. That is the truth, daddy. If I give you my bank statements for last year, same period of time, and this year, same period of time. That word was mine. I don't know about you, but it was mine. It was mine. It was mine. Because it has been said that some must enter. Some must enter. I am here to move those who are not part of that some into that part of some. I am trying to move you from where you have been stuck to enter to that position of that some. Because some must. There are men that hear the word of God. Joshua and Caleb heard God. And they said we must go now. No, not to. I told you God is a God of now. 
He said, we must go now. Now. That place is good for our taking. Now you are wasting time. Get tired of being jobless. Wake up and tell God, I am getting out of this house. Whatever you whatever you take me, that is where you'll open the door. Get tired. Wake up in the morning. Come here and declare that that day is a profitable day for you. That you will make profit that day. And walk out there and tell God, God, you are not a liar. And if anybody has lied, it is the devil. And he is under my feet. So whatever he is planning, he cannot reach me. And walk in faith. You know, I, I keep on hearing people telling me, Pastor, you know, I've been praying, I've been praying, I've been praying, and I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. Hey, please come down. Because even Moses used to come down. And when the day that he did not come down, he went. Hey, he went completely. So come down from that mountain. Because when you go to the mountain, God, God tells you, you hear, God speaks, and you hear. You come down, you do what God has said. You don't stay in the mountain. What? Mtu, mtu umekamu limani. Paka unanyonyesha picha, unaniambia una vile nimekonda. Hapana. That, that is not the way. God now reaches us. He nourishes us. When, 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 when Moses was in the mountain, when he came down, he has not eaten 40 days, 40 nights. He glowed. He glowed. Because he was in the presence of God. In the presence of God, there is sufficiency. But, but, but we, deal, we deal with things with unbelief in our hearts. And, and that unbelief is demonstrated by what we have. Because you can't say you believe and you don't have. I tell God all the time, you told me to do what I am doing. If you let go of my hand, I will fall very badly. Because the higher you go, when, when God takes you up, they say the higher you go, the cooler it becomes. The drop is bad. So when, when you're climbing up, you hold tighter on God. And you tell God, I cannot let you go. And do not let me go. But when you are here on the ground, it does not matter whether you are holding on to God. Who will know? Who will know if you're holding on to God? You're on the ground. You should start going up. And when you go up, you are, people will see you going up. But you know who is lifting you up. You're not hearing me. You know who is lifting you up. And when they are lifting you up, God is holding you. You cannot allow him to let you go. And that is the realm of faith. Because you have moved from the natural. You have moved from doing things naturally. Now you are doing things God's way. He, it is his way. So you go where he sends. You do what he says. You don't, it doesn't matter what it looks like. And every morning I cry, I tell God, don't let me go. Don't, don't let me go. Don't let me go. Because you, you know when you're going up, you sit down. Ah, oh, come on now. You know where down is. Because you came from down. Yeah, so you know. Uh, <laughs> you know how it... But you must let him lift you. And the only way for you to let him lift you is have faith. He's only saying, just believe. Just believe in me. Just believe in me. Hold my hand. When, when Peter saw Jesus walking on water, he said, Master, call me. And that's what most Christians do. We get out. And it's a dangerous place. We get out of the boat. You should have stayed in the boat. Because this Christianity thing is not easy. 
It's not easy. And it's not in the boat. You have to step out and say, Father, I know I'm a sinner. From today on, I will live for you. You're getting out of the boat. Yes, you're getting out of the boat. And he got out and he started walking. And most of us do that. We do our first, second, third step. And we look. And we say, no. What am I doing? And we look back. When you look back, you start sinking. And we cry out, Master, save me. Master, save me. The children of Israel cried and said, Jehovah, he's a bad God. He did us wrong. Why would he remove us from there? To bring us here to die in the wilderness. But they had a promise like we have a promise. Stand up on your feet. I want you to take a minute and just ask God. Ask God to forgive us. Ask God to help us to live a life that he wants us to live. To keep on the promises that he has made for us. The promises that he has given to us through the prophetic word of God that, that comes out from this pulpit. Take a minute right now. Take a minute right now. Open up your mouth and tell God, I am tired of this situation. I am tired of living like you did not speak. I am tired of living in a place that is of defeat. Lord Jesus. Rekete ye la bazika tayana mazanta. O la mazaka tayala bazika tayana mazanta. Sheila Bazika Tayana Makai. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. I cannot hear you pray. You need to cry to God. You need to cry to God. You need to cry to God. Sheila Bazika Tayana Mazant. Lima Zika Tayana Mazantai. Lima Zaka Tayala Bazantai. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. There are people that are in the crowd right now. You are in a place of desperation. You need God's help now. Things are not working. You have lost your job. They are threatening to throw you out of your house. I want you to get out of your seat and come up here right now because you are about to receive something now that will change your situation, that will change the circumstances that you are in. You know that you need God's help. I want you to come up here right now. And you found yourself here. I want you to carry up and come here. God is about to do a shifting. God is about to do a shifting. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Oh, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth. I pray, oh, Lord, that there shall be a new beginning. A new beginning. A new beginning, Lord. From now, Lord. From now, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Sheikh Hatayana Mazika Tayala
can allow me to do one more thing. Come here. When I entered, the Lord spoke to me. And he says, your voice will be heard in nations. He is moving you out from where you have been stuck for so long. There is something new that is going to happen in the next three months. Next year, you will be totally different. And your voice, your voice will be heard by great men. God is going to lift you up so high. The only thing that you have to remember is to hold on to him. He told me to tell you, stay humble. Stay humble. Stay humble. And he is going to lift you up. some time lift your hands open your mouth and tell God I am not staying in this level another day Jehovah he is I am he is the God of now Catch whatever you need now. Catch it. Somebody who came all the way from Makueni seeking deliverance, seeking healing. They, they've been here since yesterday. I want you to know God has done it for you. Go and live in your health. <clears throat> Is it you, sir? Go live in your health. The season changed. And now it's time to move from glory to glory, from strength to strength. God wants us to be ten times better. Receive the promise and lift your hands. Tell him, Father, in the name of Jesus, I refuse to be stuck in the last season. I am moving out of that season in the name of Jesus I say it in your own words tell him in your own way our confession brings possession Me 
Nizo balando rababa ya si araba. Mindo raba ya sakar ya rabo shama baba. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. We thank you and we praise you. Put your hands together. Clap your hands and shout unto God. I say shout unto God. With a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. From the days of John until now. The kingdom suffers violent. The violent take it by force. Spiritual things are caught. You have to catch it. It is your season to turn things around. Things are going to happen so fast. I say so fast. The remaining part of this year. For those who must enter. Is going to be incredible. I say it's going to be incredible. Because there are people who must enter. There are some who must enter. And I choose to be part of those who must enter. You know, you may be seated. It's time to give an offering unto the Lord. I'll tell you. One of the greatest things in the kingdom of God is to understand that all what we have has been given to us by God for the extension of his kingdom. And when we don't give in unbelief, but we give in faith. Our financial story can never be the same. So watch how you give to God. Because if you give to God like you don't believe you will be ten times better, you get stuck where you are. But when you give to him, believe it. Because your giving is an action. It's a faith action. I don't know why I'm saying this. There are some people who are going through a financial crisis. But it is going to be ended by your radical faith. I say it's going to be ended by your radical faith as you give to God without sparing anything. Lift that offering. I'm going to pray. If you are giving by M-Pesa, you take an envelope, indicate the amount you are, you are giving by M-Pesa so that a we have got proper records of our giving. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to bring our tithes, our offerings, our free givings. May you bless the work of our hands. Increase and multiply the seed that is being sown that we may always have an abundance for every good work. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. And all God's people shout a big amen. Well, the ashes will come.
Lord.